Hello everyone, this is Michael Tarallo, Pre-Sales Director with Pentaho Corporation, and I wanted to take a moment to highlight a email that I just received from Matt Casters, uh, Chief Architect and Founder of the Kettle Project, also known as Pentaho Data Integration. I'm going to switch over to that email right here, and basically he is allowing me and the community the ability to preview a new plugin for Pentaho Data Integration called the Pentaho Reporting Plugin. As you know by now, Pentaho Data Integration has a robust library of transformation steps and job entries. This plugin basically allows you to execute a Pentaho report and save it to a location within a file system wherever the Pentaho server is running. So what I'm going to do is step you through the actual download of the plugin, the setup of the plugin within Pentaho Data Integration, Release Candidate 1, uh, version 4.1 and then go through a simple process of creating a report and executing that transformation entry. So here is the actual email that I received. Please keep in mind that feedback is welcomed and uh, the URLs will be in the sandbox entry uh, along with this video. So just to give you an idea, here's the screenshot of the step. This is the configuration and the actual flow. As you understand the way Kettle works or Pentaho data integration works, uh, there are streams of data th that come in the form of columns and fields. So we've defined a uh, file name or report definition location and the output location. So that's the actual screenshot. Let's go back and here's the link to download this. So I'm just going to click on this link and you're going to see Pentaho reporting.zip. Click on save file. Uh, it'll download this particular package to my downloads directory and then what we're going to do is uh, unzip it and make it available within the plugins directory of Pentaho Data Integration. Okay, and with the magic of video we're able to speed up that download process and what we'll do is now swap over to our downloads location and here's the uh, Pentaho reporting.zip file and what we're going to do is just basically uh, extract this. We'll open it up with uh, the 7-zip file manager and we're going to extract and we're going to put it into the location of where I have Pentaho data integration version 4.1 release candidate 1 installed and that is going to be underneath my computer C and then I have a location called Pentaho and then our 3.7 release and then 3.7 is the actual BI Suite release, but Pentaho Data Integration version 4.1 is the ETL tool version, if you will. So PDI EE. And then I'm going to download that into Data Integration and then put it right into the plugins directory. Okay, so that file's been put in to the Data Integration plugins directory. Now what we'll do is we'll swap over to Pentaho Data Integration and you can see here's the plugins directory, here's the lib directory and the Pentaho reporting plugin.jar that was just copied. Here's spoon.bat which is uh, the launching program for Pentaho Data Integration. I'll double click that. Okay, and let me bring that into view here. Okay, so now let's create a new transformation. And you'll notice you now have your Pentaho reporting output transformation step or transformation entry. So in order to use this, we need a, a Pentaho report file. So what I'm going to do is go into now the Pentaho report designer, uh, which is the desktop design tool for creating operational and enterprise reports. What I'm going to do here is go to welcome and inside the welcome location there is the inventory list report so we're going to use that one as our main report okay so in order for this example to work we got to make some adjustments to this type of report um, this report has a couple of advanced features such as auto populated parameters uh, through the execution of additional SQL queries uh, also this report is set up with what's called a JNDI or JINDI connection uh, these are some advanced configuration options in these reports that uh, the new plugin possibly might not recognize or might require additional configuration in order to get it to work. So for this example we're just going to keep it uh, relatively simple. So what I'm going to do here is check the JDBC edit data source and 
notice that it's selected as sample data memory. Uh, that's one of the options where we have what's called a uh, JNDI type connection where there's a property file that has all the JDBC configuration for the data source. Uh, to keep things simple, we're just going to change it to native JDBC, put in the host name here, and username. Uh, please note that I do have the hypersonic sample database service started. Uh, that is an option of a sample database that comes with Pentaho. Uh, the other option that we do provide is an inline database and memory database with the Tomcat server. So just keep in mind, have your data source connected as JDBC for this example. Okay, so we're successfully connected. And then here we can preview the result. Now what I'm going to do is make the parameters that are in this report um, a little bit simpler. You'll notice there's line for the product line and then the hide bar selection, which is a uh, graphical bar here that's displayed. So what we're going to do is go into the parameter for line. And instead of being a query, uh, what we're going to do is just uh, delete reference to this query here. And we're just going to represent this as uh, a text box. Okay, and what this is going to make the parameterization a little bit simpler. So instead of a multi-selection list, it's just going to do a single parm for now. And then we're going to do the same thing for the uh, hide bar selection. Make that into a text box and take out the parameters here. Okay, now we don't need the uh, table data source anymore. And we should be able to preview this now. Okay, so now we have some simple parameterization. I'm going to save this as uh, inventory report with parm. I'm just going to put it into a temp directory. And there's the modifications. Okay, now that we have a report definition saved, what we're going to do is go into the Pentaho data integration tool, and this is the spoon interface, create a new transformation. And you'll notice now with the plugin we have that Pentaho, Pentaho reporting object. And now we need to feed this object uh, with some fields or columns. So notice that we have an entry for report definition file and output file. So the report definition file is going to be the field or column that we're going to define uh, within the flow. That's basically going to be the location to the PRPT and the output file is the location uh, where it's going to be written to. And then notice that there's the areas for parameters and the mapping between the parameter name and the actual field name coming in and then also the output processor for the rendering format. So to get started with this step, we got to provide some input. So a nice step to use is the data grid step. And data grid basically allows you to you know, define your own columns and data elements. So I'm just going to connect those two as such. Go into data grid, and now put in some field names. So this one will be called uh, report def. And then the next one will be called output lock. And then the parms. So we had one for product line, so we'll call this one uh, line parm, and the other one was the bar parm, so we'll call this bar parm. And these are all going to be defined as data types of string. Okay, now the data for these. Uh, so a report def is just the location of the PRPT file. So here is our PRPT file. I'm just going to copy that file name into the buffer and copy the whole path. Okay, so that's my report def. Now the output location is just where I'm going to put the output, which I'll put it in the same location, but this will be called my output. And then since we're going to do a PDF file, I'm just going to do .pdf. Uh, the line parm is going to be ships, and the bar parm is going to be true. Okay, so these are the parameters, this is the output location, and this is the report definition. And then we can click preview here if you just want to see the actual uh, result that would look like the flow of data that would come through if you were outputting this, to, let's say, a target table or something like you normally would use ETL for. All right, so now in the Pentaho report output, the report definition file can now be selected as a field. So here's report def and the output file, output location, and then the par names. And this is where you can do the mapping. So you have your line parm and you have your bar parm. So if we go back to the report designer and we look at the parameters, we have one called line. So that's the parameter name here. And then we have one called hide bar section.
Okay, so those uh, map those parameters, and then here's your output format, which is PDF. Okay, so that's it. So it's a two-step transformation, taking the flow from the data grid, supplying the parameters to the Pentaho report output object. Okay, here's the directory that it'll be written to. And now all we have to do is just run this transformation. We can save this out. I'll just put a bunch of cues. Okay, now the transformation has ran, and let's go. And now you can see here's my output PDF. And we can open it up, and there is my report. So this is a great way to add some additional uh, information gathering or reporting aspects to your data integration flows. Um, you might include this um, as an object in the flow that might produce some reports. Um, some people could actually use this to report against the Pentaho data integration repository or the log files uh, to produce uh, the resulting output in order to trap uh, statistics and metrics of the actual jobs and transformations as well. So that's it. I just wanted to keep this brief and kind of show you the innovation that uh, our chief architect and founder of Pentaho Data Integration uh, has added into the product. Uh, try it yourself. Uh, the links are available inside this entry on the sandbox. Um, and please do provide your feedback, and I hope to speak with you soon. Have a good day, guys.